flight is a, a chance to focus on some of the amazing things that we've learned about light and using light, but more importantly, about some of the amazing opportunities we have to learn new things uh, about light, to learn new things about uh, the world uh, that we live in, the universe that we live in, using light to make new technological advances. As a physicist, I see light in a very particular way. I, I think of light and I think of Maxwell's equations and I think of all these sorts of, you know, photons and lasers and all of this sort of physics jargon. But there's an awful lot of things about light that I don't know. I don't know how biologists see light, I don't know how photographers, artists, all these other people, I don't know how they see it. Physicists know that light and photonics is at the center of modern society and the promise that it holds for the future in many areas and challenges. The, the mission of the International Year of Light is to make sure that at the end of 2015, everyone else does as well. Behind me you can see parts of a huge camera obscura that has been built in the shape of a turban in honour and to celebrate the work of Ibn al-Haytham in optics. So if you can kind of look behind me, you can see this thing here. And on the other side over here, you can see a creative representation of Ibn al-Haytham, which is done by a student artist in Jordan. Again, as a tribute to this, uh, what we call, father of optics, Ibn al-Haytham. Light, like the light used now to film me, uh, the LED lighting is a fantastic opportunity to bring light to the developing world in a way that can leapfrog past uh, grids that bring electricity with the advent of inexpensive solar and uh, robust batteries and LEDs, you can read at night. You can do things at night. You don't have to read by a kerosene lantern, which is killing millions of people a year. There are 600 million kerosene lamps in Africa as we speak, and uh, although there is grid expansion, the rate at which that is happening is very slow, and we cannot sit and wait for the grid to reach every corner of Africa because that may not happen in this lifetime. And therefore, uh, we see ourselves offering this solution. So, uh, with uh, solar lighting, we are offering light to people that don't have and may not, may not have had it for the rest of their lives. I am actively uh, involved into the International Year of Light because it is a very important event at the world scale and also at the African scale where there are several issues related to uh, the use of solar energy or uh, using optical telecommunications to power African economy and I believe that this event is an event that will be key uh, to raise awareness about uh, the benefits that we can have and we can get from light-based technologies. I work mainly with light matter interaction, um, but I'm also really quite interested in how scientists use their imagination to actually further the frontiers of science because particularly in light um, we're seeing that things happen that we could never imagine that light could do. I am representing IES Mexico section who is uh, illuminating engineering society uh, and uh, we try to spread lighting around the world. Talking about light, not just like science, not just art, just uh, talking about light uh, for everyone. You can, you can see here an exhibition about the caves of Haiti. It's a work we've been, we've been doing for uh, five years now. And in this exhibition you can show the wonderful landscapes, underground landscapes of Haiti, and how light and shadow can 
in pictures and photographs uh, make this case look beautiful. The Year of Light is a really unique opportunity to make an impact by bringing together different communities, not just from across the science and engineering world, but also the arts and cultural communities that we don't really interact with enough. And I'm absolutely convinced that by all working together, we can get our messages across much more effectively than we ever do by working apart. Thank you.